Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I'm going to show you how I use Invocoder. Invocoder is a really cool plugin uh, if you like vocoders. I know some people really love them, some people really hate vocoders, but if you like them like me, I'll show you how I use this and hopefully go over some you know, like troubles you might have, etc., and how to fix them easily. So first, you're probably wondering, how do I even set up the vocoder? And I'll show you. Usually you'll have two tracks. One will be a synthesizer, and the other one will be a vocal of some sort. Let's just mute the vocal for a second. I'll turn off M vocoder, and we'll just look here. I just have this synthesizer uh, called Analogy, and it'll just give me a pad sound like this. Very simple, very basic pad sound. Whenever you're doing this, I recommend not going to extremes with the highs, or I should say just the highs, of your synthesizer or whatever you want to do. You don't have to use a synthesizer. You could use whatever instrument you want. The reason is, if you have something that's really high and your vocal is low, it's not going to work well because your vocal is not going to excite that part of the signal. You need them to be in a similar range. Usually if you have a low instrument, like um, let's say a distorted electric bass, your voice will actually be in some of the similar register. Even if it doesn't go quite that low, some of the upper harmonics will be in the same register as your voice. However, if you use like a really low sine note or something, then it's not gonna work and you're gonna run into the same problem. So try to have, I guess your carrier and your other sound, whatever it is, in close to the same register. So here we have a pad, so that'll cover a lot of the frequency. It'll, it'll be fine. I'll show you the vocal. It sounds like this. Hey, this is Chandler for Melder Production. Today I'm going to try to show you some cool things you can do. Just me talking. Nothing interesting there. What we want to do at first is take this, actually I'll turn on Invocoder, set it to default. I like to make sure the limiter is on because it sometimes gets loud and I might turn the volume down a little bit because combining them together sometimes gets louder than they are individually. From here, we need to send something from the vocal into the synthesizer here. In Reaper, you can just take this and drag it here. If you don't know how to do this in your DAW, I don't know, consult your DAW, I, I can't explain it here, but it's usually fairly easy just to send something. Your vocal sent into Invocoder. And we have Invocoder on the same track as our synthesizer. From here, you might want to turn it down depending on how loud it is. Let me turn it down like a decibel or so. If I don't want MIDI to go into it, that's fine, etc. I can turn that off. Here I have post fader and pre fader. I usually like to put this pre fader, and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to put this pre fader like this, turn it off, and then we'll play them together. Hey, this is Chandler for Melded Production. Today I'm going to try to. Okay, so you heard the vocoded signal, but you also heard me talking. You're like, why am I hearing that? And that's because this vocal track is also playing. Because I have this pre-fader, I can turn this one all the way down to zero, and it'll mute it, but it's still sending the signal into Invocoder. So now, if I play it, it'll sound like this. So you hear it's like it's vocoding, but it not only sounds really uh, low in volume, but it also sounds really muddy. And you're probably thinking like, how do I fix that? The reason that's happening is because my vocal is kind of low. The microphone I'm using has lots of bass in it. And I could go into the vocals and I could try to EQ the signal to get more highs out of it. But you don't need to do that. What I usually do, and I think one of the most effective things to do, is this whitening. So that's the first thing I want to show you. By turning this up, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of balance the signal out. It explains it here. Here Controls the amount of special effect applied to the carrier signal, which basically amplifies the missing frequencies according to the detector results, hence resulting in a richer sound. This will make it brighter and clearer. That should be easier to understand. I'll do this and I'll turn it up and you can hear it like this. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this and it sounds good. You can make things brighter, you can make things darker, there's all sorts of things. You don't even have to sing. You can just talk into it like this and it'll make it sound great. Now you can hear it and you're probably thinking, oh, that sounds like a vocoder. 
So that is what we want. From here, there's lots of different vocoder modes, which I'll show you in a second. But here in the detector, you're probably wondering, what does this do? The attack and release settings will change it so the volume doesn't go up and down so quickly. As I'm speaking, you can hear that my vocals are making the synthesizer go up and down in volume very quickly. By changing the detector settings, we can change that. And if we, let's say, increase the release, it'll almost sound like there's a reverb on there. Sometimes you want this release and attack really fast because you want to add, you know, the rhythm of this vocal sound. But if you don't, you can make it longer and it will be a little bit smoother. So I'll do it. I'll turn it down a little bit. You can hear it. It almost sounds the same. Hey, this is Chandler from Melbourne Production. Today I'm going to try to show you some cool things you can do with Invocoder. Okay, now let's turn it up. Hey, this is Chandler from Melbourne Production. Today I'm going to try to show you some cool things you can do with Invocoder. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this. It sounds good. You can make things brighter, you can make things darker, and there's all sorts of things. You don't even have to say. You can just talk into it like this, and it'll make it sound great. You can hear how it's smoother, and it almost sounds like a reverb. Sometimes you want that, but sometimes you don't. And same thing with RMS length, hold. The attack almost does the exact same thing. Hey, this is Chandler from Melbourne Production. Today I'm going to try to show you some cool things you can do with a vocoder. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this and it's sound. Now obviously that's hurting the intelligibility. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. Let me turn this up and I'll show you something else. You're wondering, what does this freeze button do? What this will do is, wherever I am in the vocal, it will stop on that particular sound, like the A sound or F sound, and it will freeze that, and it will allow you to still hear the synthesizer, but it will be processed just through that one sound. Let me see if I can grab a good version for you, like this. Hey, this is Chandler from Melbourne Production. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with... Sounds good. Can make things... And there's all sorts of... So on those vowels or consonants or whatever, it's just stopping there. So that's kind of a nice thing you can do, and it's interesting sometimes. But let's kind of move on here. You're probably thinking, oh, that's good, but it's not like super intelligible. What if I wanted to make it even more intelligible for, let's say, a movie project, pro uh, project or something? To do that, you want to change the amount of bands. The less bands you have... In general, in my opinion, the less intelligible it'll sound, the less you can actually hear the words, but the more you'll hear the synthesizer. You can hear more of the pitch, etc. So here's 32. Hey, this is Chandler from Melbourne Production. Let's put it 10. So it just kind of gives it a rhythmic flavor, but you can't really hear what I'm saying. Now let's try turning it way up. Let's try like 93. Hey, this is Chandler from Melbourne Production. Today I'm going to try to show you some cool things you can do with Invocoder. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this and it sounds... I'm sorry, it's going... Distorting a little bit, maybe I should turn this down. You have to be careful with this, that's why I put on the limiter, but also watch your volumes to make sure you're not getting too loud. But hopefully you heard this at 93. You can hear almost everything I'm saying perfectly well, but you're not hearing a lot of the synthesizer. You're not hearing the pitch of it. So how you want to set this is up to you. Luckily, you have all the way up to 100, where it's really intelligible, but not much of the pitch. Or you can go down to 4, where it's like, okay, I'm hearing the pitch completely, but you can't understand what I'm saying. In general, I would say if you want to do more like a vocal special effect, like for a movie or a TV show, I want to sound like a robot or something, I might move it up higher. If I'm doing a song and I was like, I just want a little like rhythmic thing, but you don't really have to hear what I'm saying exactly, I move it down. That's up to you. Let's move on. I'm going to do the second sound here. Let's turn this off for a second. I'll change it to this. So I have the FM growl, but I'm not using the actual growl yet. I'll use the vocals. It's just a kind of a harsh bass sound like this. So let's move our vocal over, and we're going to do the same thing. This Now this is just a bass sound. The other one was chords. This is just a low sound here. 
Hey, this is Jimmy from Melba Production. Today I'm gonna try to show you some cool things you can do with Invocator. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this and it sounds good. The same thing, we can move the bands down. It's hard to hear, but if I move it up like this. Hey, this is Jimmy from Melba Production. Today I'm gonna try to show you some cool things you can do with Invocator. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this and it sounds good. You can make things brighter, you can make the you probably shouldn't change the bands while it's playing, but I did it anyway, so <laughs> that's not going to sound good, but you get an idea. So you can find whatever sounds best for your project. As I said, it's play with the attack and release here, but there's a few other things I will show you, and one is the format shift. So if I really want to do like a alien voice or something, you can shift this down or up. If I shift it up, it will sound uh, like a child talking or something, or it'll Mickey Mouse. Hey, this is Jimmy from Melba Production. Today I'm going to try to show you some cool things you can do with Invocator. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this and it sounds good. However, for a bass like this, I probably want to move this down. Like this. Hey, this is Jimmy from Melba Production. Today I'm going to try to show you some cool things you can do with Invocator. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this and it sounds good. You can make things brighter, you can make things darker, there's all sorts of things you don't even have to say. You can just talk into it like this and... It'll make it sound great. So that's uh, something you can do with it by messing with the format shift. You can make it sound like a completely different person, like an alien or something. And uh, there's lots of other things you can do, but last but not least, I'll show you the equalizer. Now, this isn't your traditional equalizer. What this is doing is for each of these bands, like here I have 52 bands. But if I move it down, see here, there's just four bands. And for each of them, it allows you to set the volume of each individual band here. So if I think, oh, I want a little bit more of the upper mids like this. Apologize for that, I was clipping a little bit. But you get the idea. You can make it brighter and darker for each band and it gives you a lot of versatility with this. So in case you think like, ah, oh, I can't understand it or oh, I wish I had a little bit more power in the bass, you can move these up. You don't even have to you know, move them next to each other. I can have this one down, this one up, etc. Which, actually, I don't know. I haven't tried that. I'm not sure if that's interesting or not. We can, we can try it. It might sound crazy, actually. Let's see here, like this. It didn't sound too bad, except for the clipping at the beginning. But you can play with this all you want, and maybe in the future, if you want to know some more advanced things, I'll show you. But this is like a basic setup. I would say as soon as you put it in there, if you know you have a microphone that's kind of dark, just turn the whitening up. I would always say turn the whitening up and set that first. Once that's sounding good, then you can mess with the other things. And, you know, you can get whatever you want by adjusting the bands, the detector, etc. Also, if you want to hear like the carrier or the modulator, you can move these up. So that way, before when we had the vocal going in there, you're like, oh, I kind of like that you can add that in there. Or, oh, I want to hear the actual synthesizer in the background. You can add that too. And there's other things with the different modes, which I didn't really explain too much, but they're not really that different. Uh, the morph is okay. Ring modulation is interesting, but I probably wouldn't use it for vocals. If you know what a ring modulator does, it, it can sound good on vocals, but generally I, I don't think it does. Exciting is exciting. I think the main one is the vocoder. I'll show you the difference between vocoder and vocoder 2. Vocoder 2 uses the detector and it sets a few things. So if, let's say, I move this here and I move it down, it'll just move between the mix together or just the uh, synthesizer, I believe. Like that. However, the dual mode will, I believe, it uses the detector. So if I move this up, you'll notice it almost sounds like a weird delay or it sounds like it's diffused or something like this. Hey, this is Trevor from Melba Production. Today I'm going to try to show you some cool things you can do with InvoCoder. Hopefully I'm staying on beat with this and it sounds good. You can... 
Yeah, see, it sounds kind of weird, whereas if I have it normal. For some reason, it sounds reminds me of when I was a child and I had a, a hall in my house that would ring like that. But I don't know. It's a kind of cool effect to me. You might want to use that. So that's when you might want to use the vocoder dual as opposed to the vocoder. But usually I have it up to 100%. So I can just use the normal vocoder. I hope that answered any questions you might have about using Invocoder and how it works. I really love Invocoder because it has so many bands. Many of them only have like a few bands, but having up to 100 bands really makes it uh, really versatile. And there's all sorts of things you can do from just like monster voices to actual like traditional vocoding that you are used to. If you have any questions about this, leave those down below. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done that. And check out all the other plugins that meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.